what's going on guys? So for a long time on my channel, I have done a majority of my cooking on Kamados. But then over time, I switched over to trying out a pellet grill. And I was fairly impressed with that, just the technology on that. And then also I went with the master built gravity smoker, which we can talk about that in a later video. Um, my thoughts on that grill. But the spotlight on this video, I have found the one Kamado that should last me a lifetime and it's going to be the one that I grill with going forward forever. Now, all right, to be clear, I did pay for the grill. Um, I did get a little bit of a discount on it, but I was so excited about it that that didn't matter to me. I, I really wanted to add it to my grill arsenal and this is going to be my go-to Kamado going forward and I'll explain why here in a moment. But um, every time I grill, I always go back to Kamados. They're just my favorite style of grill, um, especially in the winter time because they just retain heat so well that you don't really you don't really worry about maintaining temp inside them because they're so thick and the ceramic itself acts kind of like bricks, you know, um, kind of that effect where it soaks up that heat and just keeps the food nice and going and it maintains that steady temp. Um, so I'm very excited to use this grill. Um, SNS has been great as far as communication goes. I reached out to them having questions about it and stuff. Uh, they were more than supportive on anything I've needed and I'm just ready to rock and roll this bad boy. It's just a beautiful, beautiful Kamado. Nice 304 stainless steel stand, 304 stainless steel vent, um, 304 stainless steel everywhere. Everything that's on here is 304. So it's designed to last. I did buy a cover for it and I will keep a cover for on it when I'm not using it just like any of my other grills. So let's get in on this and talk about it a little bit and why I like it and why I chose it. The shelves for one I like. I like how easy they are just to set up. They got a nice, they're kind of like a, some kind of poly shelf. Um, definitely designed to last. I can scrub them, not worry about them getting rusty or anything. Um, there's one on each side of the grill. Just like so. Let's take a look on the inside and uh, show you what we're working with here. Now this Kamado, which I have only seen in the Kamado Joe, as far as like multi-zone cooks, uh, the Kamado Joe is probably the closest thing you can compare it to. Let's pop it open. All right, you can see we got an upper tier rack here. It just simply pops out. Pretty cool. You wanna add a second rack or two of ribs on top. Uh, this is your typical plate setter that comes with most Kamados whether it's a pit boss or whatever, but theirs is a nice plate setter. Set that aside. Now here's where it gets interesting and different and why I really chose this thing. In a Weber kettle, you can buy what's called the slow and sear setup. Basically what a slow and sear is, is you got your hot fire off to the side and then you got your meat over here. And when you're ready to sear, um, you just basically move your meat over above the hot coals and get that good sear going. But you can smoke up to a certain temp and then move your meat over and sear. But you don't have to do any searing. You can always just have your fire over here and keep your meat over here and do like a side, side type smoke deal where you just have your meat over here, brisket, whatever, and you smoke that way, indirect heat. Just keeping your heat over here and your meat over here. But What's cool about it is you can put your meat over here on the cool grate, spin it over to the coals, and the searing is actually going to happen by the fire and not by the grate itself. So you're getting a more true sear from the actual flame versus the sear you get uh, that you typically see with grill marks and everything. Uh, you're not getting you're not searing up your meat too quick with the grate itself you're searing it with the actual hot coals and then when it's time to flip your meat you just spin the grate around again to this cool side and then you put your meat over here and this is cooler so you're actually getting a true sear from the fire as well thought that was really awesome and cool uh, now i know a lot of people have been working with a slow and sear for a long time but i really like that they brought this to the Kamado environment because a lot of times 
it's easier to manage your fire add like if you're doing short smokes and you don't really need the real estate over here but you're just doing some ribs or whatever this is perfect because you can just lift up the um, oops lift up the uh, grate refuel add more wood whatever close it off and you're good to go for a while I think this is a great setup for like short cooks or small small bits of meat that you're not needing the whole grate for so yeah I really liked that this worked with this Kamado environment and uh, slow and sear or adrenaline barbecue company which uh, they, they now go by SNS grills they uh, have designed it where this particular Kamado you can't do this in a regular Kamado and let me explain why in this particular Kamado they had it designed this just pops right out and it has this little has this little v-shaped water pan uh, they just sits in there and the coals kind of support it on the other side but um, this Kamado was designed with a lip that runs the full rim of it and they put that lip in there so that it would support these um, this ring that's in here it's just a little ring and it has these supports on it for the easy spin grate and the upper grate or the upper grate as you as you will and it just sits in there kind of just sits in there just like that and I I did buy the deluxe version of this grill um, so it did come with the roasting pan this is the roasting pan also the drip and griddle pan I think they call it and it has a little rack too but you can set this in there just by itself and it's good for catching drippings from your pork butt or whatever we move that aside and then they have a, another grate in here that you can take out or leave in uh, depending on your setup this is an upper level coal grate so you can bring the fire closer to your meat if you want so you can put all your coals on this instead it's basically kind of like a Weber grate but there's a stainless steel so it should last a long long time now what I did add to this grill that did not come that didn't come with the grill um, which I thought was I don't know why I never bought one of these before <laughs> but this kick ash basket basically if you have a Kamado <laughs> this is a value add big time because based on my research all your lump coal or briquettes or whatever stay up here and the ash continues to fall through and then go to the bottom grate but this is better than just putting your coals on the bottom grate in your Kamado because you get better airflow so I thought that was really awesome to go ahead and pick this up um, but yeah I did buy this separate uh, from kick ash directly and it's real heavy duty man it's like it's thick it's solid but if you've seen in my other videos at the bottom of the grill you have this cast iron grate it's usually cast iron grate and it just sits down at the bottom and usually you just put your coals down on top of that and that's fine I've done that for years I did it with the uh, steel acorn I did it with the um, ceramic acorn I did it with the pit boss but I should have just went with uh, <laughs> a kick ash basket because it just sits, it just sits down in there like that and all your coals stay in the basket and everything else falls through all your ash and stuff and it's supposed to help with the airflow and you don't clog up these little holes uh, inside the firebox or the, f or the fire bowl I should say so yeah but yeah it just goes together like so man it's it's pretty easy to set up you just put your you don't have to have this in here you can still treat this Kamado like a traditional Kamado you can just put but I'm leaving the basket in there because I really think that adds a lot of value to the to the cook but you can just put your coals in the bottom put your plate setter on top of that and uh, and then and you don't have to put the upper grate but I think the upper grates good like if you're gonna do burgers or something you could just put your upper grate in and I since I do have this basket in here I have to kind of line it up <laughs> with the slit slits in the grill but you can see it's not a big deal um, as a matter of fact if I was cooking 
at the middle, if I was putting my coal here versus at the bottom in the basket, I would just take the kick ash basket out and just put my coals on this. Um, but what I'm getting at is, you could treat this like as a like a traditional kettle setup. Maybe you're only wanting to do some direct fire burgers or something. You could just set the uh, spin grate on there, and you have your coals just a little bit lower than the spin grate, and you got you got that heat closer to your grate. This is why I chose this Kamado is because um, the versatility is just is so many ways to cook on this thing and. I'm very excited to uh, give it a try, but I think this roast pan, this is, this is a roast pan, drip, gri drip and griddle pan. Um, basically, uh, you can use this to hold a roast, you can use it to catch drippings, uh, you can use it for a variety of things really, so I'm very excited to uh, put this thing to use here real soon. Um, I still have to do the initial burn in on it, but that's why I chose it different zones. You got lower zone, higher zone. You got like about three zones on this thing. Um, you could do your typical slow and sear setup. You just take the spin grate off. You put your slow and sear in there like so. Put your coals in there. You Kamado's water pan. It's debatable if you even need the water pan. It actually looks like it, it won't move anyways if the coals aren't there. But in a Kamado, I, I've realized that water pans are kind of questionable if you even really need them. But if you're doing something where the fire is really close to your meat and all, it's probably beneficial to have a water pan there. If you're doing like a slow, like a reverse sear, or you're doing like a uh, like a long time smoke, probably not an idea. Not a bad idea since the fire is closer to the meat. Technically, having the coals up here versus down below, um, it make it does make sense to uh, maybe add some water pan in there to help kind of retain a moist environment for the meat. Um, so also, um, if you're doing that setup, you just put the easy spin grate back on there. And then you have this upper tier where if I want to add another piece of meat or something, I can just put this on, put my other piece of meat up here. So technically, depending on how flat the brisket is, I could put a brisket underneath and a pork butt on top if I wanted with this setup. But um, yeah, and yeah, so that's why I chose it, man. Uh, just so many options. And I watch people uh, like Beer and Barbecue by Larry and Baby Back Maniac and all these other YouTubers uh, have uh, been using one and uh, they, they sold me on it as well. But I felt like I wanted this to be my go-to grill. And so here I am. So here we are, and this is where we're going with it. Uh, I've cooked on several other types of grills. I find the Kamado to be my favorite grill of choice. Um, and they, they hold temp so steady that I don't really feel like I need uh, to really worry about having some kind of automation Wi-Fi, anything on the grill other than just a, a temp monitor probe at the grate and then just monitor it on my ink bird or my meat stick that I now have. And uh, I probably will use the meat stick some more as well uh, in some upcoming videos just because just to play with it some more and talk about it some more maybe but um, this is what's coming to the channel this is where we're going I don't have the char griller acorn anymore the ceramic I did sell it to somebody uh, it went to a good home and I think that they'll enjoy it but we're going to go with the SNS Kamado and I'm very excited to, to play with it for you guys so we will be doing some more cooks coming here real soon and it will be on this Kamado and uh, we'll see how we go. But I'm really interested in playing with these, uh, the slow and sear setup and also interested in the traditional Kamado setup with it and, and pizzas, whatever. So anyways, guys, that's where we're at. That's where we're going. New year, new grill. And this is gonna be the grill that I focus on the most for my content. It's a little pricey, uh, but man, sometimes when you want quality, you pay for it. This grill is $13.99, uh, but SNS is always running deals like 10% off, 15% off sometimes, and uh, you can get you can knock a couple hundred bucks off the grill. Uh, so if you see it on sale, you might consider buying it. Honestly, um, this is not paid for, or promoted by SNS. This is just my own personal feels about the grill already, just from looking at it, putting it together 
it was real easy to put together too. So cheers guys and uh, we'll see you soon when I do some cooks on it.